It looks like everybody has gotten their recommendation reports submitted. I really appreciate reading those and all the work that goes into making them. And I learn so much every time. So hopefully you were learning in the process as well while you were making them. This time I started learning things before I even started reading the reports. It seems maybe an outcome of more classes being online and more both business and education things being done virtually, people have gotten more comfortable with sharing their Google Docs, which is fabulous. However, it doesn't work with the Turnitin tool inside Moodle. And for a recommendation report, I need to use the Turnitin tool. So we have figured out why, I think. It seems that sharing the document will result in an error code and it recognizes the file as being too large primarily, I think, because it's still editable afterwards and the sharing and the editing features result in a lot more background software that we don't see. So to have those saved as a PDF or as a Word document and then uploaded, no problem. And if that happened in this class, it's likely going to happen in another one of them. Speaking of this class, let's have a look at the next two weeks, shall we? Okay. So on your screen, you'll see our week thing. We're on week four already, week four of an eight week class. It's pretty fast, but on the flip side, I guess because you do your other classes in about two and a half weeks, they get super compressed and pretty heavy load. Whereas by comparison, I guess eight weeks seems like an awfully long time. So I'm not sure. So this week is another discussion and it seems that people are doing very well at starting them by Wednesday and adding support for their, pers their perspectives, like personal experience or anecdotes or additional resources in ones beyond what we have here in Moodle. So that's been fantastic. And across the board, everybody has shown respect to each other, which is fantastic to see as well. It is surprising how often that doesn't happen. So that is this week's assignment. I was trying to make something a little bit lighter in comparison to the recommendation report that you just went through. And the next one is bad news business letter. And there's a variety of resources put in there for that, as well as examples. And the examples are always very helpful. I don't think I need to explain too much about the discussion post, but maybe we'll have a closer look at what we have going on for our week five, in case you would like to get that taken care of so that you buy yourself some time in some of your other stuff coming up. I know when you do your pesticides section, it's a pretty heavy section. So anything that you can do in this course to maybe give yourself some more breathing room there, I think it'd be a really good idea. If it, at all, if it is at all possible. So for your business letter, it's not just a business letter. It's a bad news business letter. So we discuss things like how to give bad news and how to make it more palatable. So we need to meet people with common ground to begin with. And a lot of that, you're going to find information from this section up here on this week's conflict resolution. You can use a lot of those tools in next week's bad news business letter. And you can choose from a variety of scenarios. We've got one for hospitality or equine or horticulture. You can use any of those. The one with equine is often very popular, but I need to um, make you aware that even if you put in some of those other pieces, like you warn her or well, mostly it's going to be warning and reminding her of the rules and those sorts of things. But when it becomes a safety issue, and that is across the board, if it is a safety issue, you need to show that you have taken proactive steps as individuals and as part of your business to ensure that safety is maintained because that is paramount. People can be charged individually, even if it's a worksite accident, a person can be found to be negligent personally as well. So you need to be very careful about this. If safety is the concern, whatever was in place for safety, if that was insufficient, then you're going to need to make sure that you're making, you're showing 
due diligence and steps that you are making sure that safety is been taken care of. And the equine situation is a clear one of that. Uh, there's the rubric. So you know how you're going to be marked and where to hand it in. Um, what else do I need to tell you about that? I don't you know. The slideshow is really good for the information and clarity of the ins and outs of bad news business letters. So that's very helpful. And this link here will give you some background. Well, maybe it won't. Oh my goodness. Huh, well, I will fix that. Speaking of fixing links, I Cole let me know that there was some broken links in where we go down here. In the practice grammar quizzes, there was some bro broken links in there. So thank you very much for sending me the email, Cole, and letting me know about those. They have been fixed up. When we first start the class, I double check any links that I had in there from before and they work. But as we know, sometimes links break or change like that one just did. <laughs> so I will make sure that that gets fixed as well. But the practice grammar quizzes are ready to go. And maybe that is something you want to consider if you're looking for if you find yourself with some time and you'd like to make some space for when you're doing that pesticide unit, something to think about. Because the grammar quiz is available, you can do it twice and it's available for the entire course. So there's that. And it will take the higher of the two marks. Okay, I think, I think that's about it. So I hope you have a great week or two weeks. And I look forward to reading your reports as well as reading your discussions in the online discussion forum. Thank you so much. Have a great day.